All right, I really want to thank one of my subscribers, CW, for sending in their own true personal story. Um, basically, she posted in the comments, I apologize. Uh, I did not read it, but apparently got, I got a lot of likes, and then she sent me through email. So if you guys do have your own true scary stories you guys would like to tell, um, please send me an email at horrorstudio1 at gmail.com, and I will most likely take a look at it, and if they are worthy, I will give them a read on my channel or put them in a compilation video. Today's video will be a bit longer, so it's a standalone story on its own. So without further ado, let us grab a blanket, turn off your lights, for true scary stories that happened living in the middle, sorry, in the middle of the night. Hi Horror Studio One, I'm a huge fan of your videos, and I've been thinking of a story to tell you. I commented on one of your videos before and got a few likes, and I think it's time to tell. Now, this might be a little long, so please bear with me. This was about 14 years ago when I was 13, now 28. I lived with my grandparents and was a troubled teen. I was always kicked out of school and was always in trouble at home. As school ended, I was in the house bored as usual, and I came home late a few nights ago, so I couldn't go outside and I was super mad. I did everything in my power to go out but it didn't help at all, and it started a huge fight and that is what made me run away. The day I made my decision, I let my friend know, and she told me where to meet her now. Friend has done this before, and she was showing me the ropes. I packed my things and ran for her house. She was waiting for me, and once I got to her house, we was out. Now after I ran away, I ended up at my aunt's house a few days later and was living a fun life. So I thought, my friend came by and went out with some friends of hers, now we'll call my friend N. So N and I went and met up with these guys, and she knew them for a while. One of the guys was an ex-boyfriend of hers, and they were enjoying their time together. And then in the midst of all this, we were smoking and drinking, so my head was a little out of it. And me being new to smoking, I got really paranoid, and was ready to go home at this point. My friend N was a little upset, and asked if she can have a minute to talk to the ex, so I said fine and went upstairs. Oh by the way, we were in the basement smoking, so... I got upstairs and was in the kitchen waiting for her end, and she was taking forever. And all I know is that the other guy that came up with me was walking up next to me. It was really dark, so it was hard to see. But from what I can tell, is that he didn't have a shirt on. And he was really big and tall, and I was really small and only 13 years old, but he didn't know that. He walked up and started to move my hair out of my face. Then he asked if I was ready to go in the living room with him. I looked at him and told him no, and I was just waiting for my friend, and at that time, he started to tell me, she'll be up soon, just come, just come with him, and he would love to taste me at the age I was. I didn't know what he was talking about, and I wasn't into sex with older men, I just liked to hang out with them because they buy alcohol, so I just told him no again, and he kept going on and on about how he could make me feel, and I got really uncomfortable, and next thing I know, he was pretty pissed off, and opened the door and told me to leave. I, I, I told him not without my friend, and he got really close to my face and told me he will put me out. So I took my chances and walked out his door. He slammed it in my face, and I was just standing there in the cold at like 3 in the morning. And it was really foggy out that night, and I was in the middle of a project housing complex and didn't know my way out. Now, where I was, some people like to call it the ghetto, me being black. I like to call it the hood, and it was a new part of town for me but I somehow made it to a main street that I was familiar with. But on my way walking, I was hearing my name being called, but I couldn't see around me and didn't want to stop moving. So once I made it to the street, I started to walk and I wanted to cry. I was alone and scared out of my mind. It was a quiet night and didn't see many cars out the walk I had to take would have taken me at least two hours and I was ready for the walk. Then a car pulled up and it was a taxi and an old guy looked over at me and asked if I needed a ride. I told him I didn't have any money to pay, and he said okay at first, then he asked me what I was doing out so late. I told him I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it was a long story. He asked me where I had to go, and once I told him, he told me he can take me to a bus stop not too far, and he'll give me money for the bus I got in. We started talking. I didn't, see, I didn't even see what way we went, it just happened so fast. He told me what bus and what time it came, but the thing that was crazy is that he told me once I get off the first bus, I need to make sure I get on the second bus to get home. 
He told me not to walk down the street. He was stressing it so much to get on that bus. And I said okay, and told him thank you. And I seen him pulled off. I looked away for a second, and when I turned back, he was gone. Now where I was standing, I would have to be able to see his car still driving, but no, it was nothing. There was no one there. A short while later, the first bus came, and I got on, told the driver where I was going, and he would tell me when it was my stop. As I was sitting, I started to feel funny, like something was just off. I just didn't know what. So times goes by, and my stop comes, and I get off, I wait for a bit, and start to get mad, so I said fuck this, and start to walk it. It was about 5 in the morning, just starting to get light, and I was happy to be getting close to home. Then another weird feeling came over me again, and just then, a red car pulled up next to me. He asked me if I needed a ride, and I turned him down. He then said, Hey, we can get some food, just get in the car. I told him no again, and he started to look around, and told me he had some weed, I just wanted to do with some pretty face. I told him no once more, and then he pulled off. The thing that was crazy to me is that he turned down the street in front of me and drove off really fast and at that moment, I walked across the street and a minute later he was on the next street ahead of me. He waited till I got close and asked again, hey girl, just get in the car and I can take you to places, I got money, I can take you to the mall or to New York City baby, anywhere. I asked him to leave me alone, I was fine, and I walked past him. He did the same thing again, drove to the next street just to catch up to me before I get there. And he said to me with an angry look on his face, Yo, you playing with me? Get the fuck in the car! I walked to the other side of the street again, and he drove to the next street this time, getting out of the car and telling me, I'm getting in. He tried to grab me, and I took off running. He started to give chase, but ran back and got in his car. I knew what he was about to do. I tried waving a car down, the first car I'd seen, and it just kept going. I seen him again, and he had to go down another street. But when I saw he was out of sight, I ran and was hiding behind a garbage can on the other side of someone's house. I heard a car pull up and door slammed. I heard him saying something, but I was so, so scared. I couldn't make out what it was. As I sat there on the side of some garbage, I started to pray and call out for my grandmother. I wanted to be with her so bad in that moment, and my grandmother is a Jehovah's Witness, and she always told me to pray. And the one thing my grandmother always told me was that I was her baby, and that we connected. And then I heard the car leaving, and so I sat there for what felt like hours. Once I came out of hiding, I ran like hell, and next thing I knew, I was in front of my aunt's house knocking on the door and laying down. And I passed out, of course. She roasted the hell out of me for coming home at that time, and I didn't tell her what happened. I, I, I didn't tell anyone about it until a year later. I was with my grandparents, and we were talking, and I told them the story. And before I was done, they were looking at each other with a crazy look on their faces. And when I asked my grandmother, told me that the day she found out I was at my aunt's house, she said she went to bed and was tossing and turning all night. And she kept seeing my face, and then she heard me calling for her, and she woke out of her sleep. She told my granddad she knew I'm in trouble, and I need them, but they didn't know where I was at. And she didn't fall back asleep until 7.35, she remembered, because her bedside clock was the last thing she looked at before she fell asleep, and that was the exact time I walked in the house. I remember because I did get something to drink before I went to bed. So, that's my story. Sorry for being so long, but it was the time to tell others so people can keep their kids safe, and so kids can know. Stay a kid for as long as you can. Who knows what would happen to me if that man would've got a hold of me. Thanks for reading. I I'll send more stories later.